Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of 60 Formula. Hope you're doing well today. Oh my good golly goodness, we've been so busy. It's the busiest month of the year. It's October, can you smell it? Can you smell the terror? The Halloweenification is happening all around. Everywhere I go, I'm like, I need to put a Halloween decoration right there. A big old wall of Blu-rays, I need a Halloween decoration right there. Below the Halloween decoration, I need a Halloween village. And then below that, I need a Siberian Huskaroni pizza. She's like, yeah, I like Halloween. Halloween's pretty dope. It's one of my favorite times of year because I get to dress up, be mischievous, and get a whole bunch of candy. If you guys like Halloween, if it's your favorite holiday of the year, go ahead and comment down below. Let me, Britney Spears, and Miss Gila know. Also, yesterday I did the impossible and I mounted a 65 inch television on my wall. So yeah, it's true. I went ahead and I made a Halloween village this year. Got like a little library right here with a skeleton in it. Some little kids carrying some books. Oh, look, you're so cute miniature. Then I got like this ghouly grocery store. It's like, ooh, look at the spookiness. Inside the little store, they're selling like spiders and tarantulas and scorpions and stuff. Whoa, whoa. is that a dude? You got like Frankenstein or like Frankenstein's monster or I don't know who that is. Igor. And then I put a whole bunch of pumpkins all over the grocery store because I'm like, you know, grocery stores sell pumpkins, so seems appropriate. Then over here we got the Garden of Eaton. And this is super duper cute. It's got like this guy all like wrapped up in some vines. It's like, do not come in here. Plants have taken over. And look at these adorable little flies. I beg your pardon? Feed me. So it goes without saying, I love Halloween. I love decorating for Halloween and all sorts of stuff. So I was busy doing that yesterday. I got into the Halloween mode and Hila and Britney Spears were like, dude, can you just stop decorating and hang out with us for two seconds? So I am super duper ready for Halloween. It's just, I love it. The fall air starts rolling on in. It's time to take the Huskies out. They're getting to go for walks again. The summer's finally over. All right, so let's get into the nitty gritty. What are we talking about today? You guys are probably wondering, yo 60, what's on the menu, brother? On today's episode, we're gonna be talking about five things that all Husky owners ask themselves. These are questions that everyone who gets a Siberian Husky asks themselves at one point or another. So if you have a fluffy little Husko at home, there's probably Probably been a time where you've been like, hey dude, does this apply to my husky? I've been thinking about this. I have a question. I need to know. So this right here is the video that's going to give you some peace of mind. Five questions that all husky owners ask themselves. These are also five questions that I get asked on the channel like every single day. And I just feel like people need to know these things. There's not a husky handbook out there that you could just pick up at the library and stroll through. So one of the best ways to learn about your Siberian husky is to get on YouTube and watch all 60 Formula. Come with us, will you, on another episode of 60 Formula where we find out five questions that all Siberian Husky owners ask themselves. Are you ready? Yeah? You ready for the episode? All right, let's do it then. High five. Yeah, can I get a high five? Yeah. Beer. Cute little Siberian Huskaroni number one. Cute little fluffy Siberian Husko numero dos. Itty bitty kitty committee numero one. And unfortunately, it's the only kitty committee I have. Here you go, Rue. You want some turkey? You want some turkey? Rue's like, dude, I want the turk. I want the turkey. Go ahead. Yeah, eat it. Eat it like a doggo, bro. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, eat it up. Number one is basically the number one question that I get asked the most. A lot of people ask me this question and I feel like nobody in the entire world talks about it when it comes to Siberian Huskies. Everybody who gets a Siberian Husky constantly worries about the size of their Husky. I think people see Huskies on the internet or they see them like in videos and they think that they're kind of really big dogs. Or at least they think that they're way bigger than they are when they eventually get to see one. So one question I get asked a whole bunch is, Hey, is my Husky the right size? They're like seven months old and I feel like they look like an itty bitty puppy and your dogs look, well, completely full grown. Most people think that they need to up their Husky's diet or try and feed their Husky more. I get so many questions of people saying, you know, I, I really like to know, like, do I need to get my Husky fatter? Because he's like eight months old and I don't know what's going on. They don't seem to be that heavy. There's a couple things that you need to keep in mind. One of those things is that Huskies are not 
not huge dogs. Remember that husky females can be as little as 35 pounds and husky males can be as little as 45 pounds. So even though like my huskies are a little bit on the heavier side, I think Britney Spears is around 55 or 60 pounds and I think Gila, Miss Grump Butt over there, is around like 50 pounds. This does not mean if you have a 35 pound husky that your husky is in any way, shape or form have any problems, nothing like that is going on. The problem is that Huskies can range in size, and sometimes they're a little bit small, especially the ladies back there. Yes, I'm talking to you, miss. Another thing we want to bring up is that Siberian Huskies don't stop growing until they're about two years old. And we get a lot of people saying, hey dude, I have a question. My Husky's like a year old, are they done growing completely? Like, what's, what's the dealio? Just because your Husky's a year old, <laughs> Look at Rue, he's like, dude, it's time for me in the episode. Just because your Husky's a year old, it does not mean that they are fully grown. Give them time to grow a little bit. When they get to be about a year and a half, you're gonna see them fill out a whole bunch. Your vet may tell you otherwise. They may say, no, those bones, they're done growing by the time they're one. And that's pretty much true. But just because your Husky's bones are done growing doesn't mean that they're done growing as an adult dog. Now, one thing I wanna mention about Miss Thick Booty over here is that if you get your dog neutered or spayed, that will usually make your Husky a little bit heavier. Now, Gila has been spayed. She does not have the ability to have little itty bitty pepperoni pizzas. But when you do neuter or spay your dog, they tend to gain a little bit of weight. You can tell because Britney Spears, well, he's not neutered. He still has all his goodness and family jewels. And because of this, he stays super duper lean. I have a lot of people in the episodes saying, hey, you don't look like you feed Britney Spears enough. And I know, trust me, I've taken him to the vet for this exact specific thing, and they tell me it's because he's not a neutered dog. And more times than not, male neutered dogs will stay very lean and very fit, so they can look good to those lady huskies. So in case you're worrying about the size of your Husky, if you think they're a little bit smaller and they're still young, don't worry about it. Let them grow. I know a lot of people have concerns about the size of their Husky. They're like, I'm really worried. They look like a tiny dog. What if I didn't get a pure breed, man? It's all good. Just let them grow. Number two is going to be, can I leave my Siberian Husky home alone for eight hours a day while I go to work with no one at home with them. So many people are attracted to the Siberian Husky breed. They really, really, really wanna have one, but they don't really have the lifestyle to find time for a doggo. If you think you're gonna be spending more than eight hours a day away from home, on a very regular basis, we're talking like 60 hours of work a week and you're the only person there to take care of them, think about getting another dog or another pet entirely. Siberian Huskies are very, very relationship oriented. They love being with people and their relationship with you is very, very important to them. So if you're spending a lot of time away, it's going to really affect the mental health of your Siberian Husky. They're gonna be really upset and feel isolated if you're not home all the time. But that doesn't mean you can't get one. If you are thinking about getting a Siberian Husky and let's say you gotta work a whole bunch, you're constantly going to the office and you don't have time to just be around every single second of every single day, there are daily doggy daycares out there where it not only lets your dog have some freedom throughout the day while you're doing your work, work, but they get to hang out and socialize, learn very critical skills that all doggos need to know and learn. So doggy daycare is a great way to keep your dog entertained, exercised, and happy while you're away at work. A bonus is that most doggy daycares will screen and vet every dog that goes there, so all the dogs there have to have their rabies shots and their regular shots. They typically won't let someone come into doggy daycare if they're not neutered or if they're not spayed. So you know your doggo is in a safer environment than if you're like taking them to the dog park or just having someone coming over and sitting in a house with them all day. Doggy daycare is definitely awesome and we definitely suggest it for those of you who have longer work schedules but still want to have that Siberian Husky love. The third question I always get is can you have other animals like itty bitty kitties with Siberian Huskaroni pizzas? Are they two animals that can coexist together? This is a very interesting question because the 
answer is always a little bit different. If you have a rescue husky and that rescue husky is set in their ways, well, I think you're probably in trouble unless you're up for some super intense training. But if you got a cat at home and you got a Siberian husky puppy, or if you got a Siberian husky puppy and you're thinking, I might want to add a Kit Kat to the family, then doing it when your husky is a puppy is the right time. I raised both of my huskies with Rue and they both got to know him from a very, very young age. They know he's a part of the pack and we have an entire video on how you can teach your Siberian Huskies to ultimately respect the kitty of the house. We'll link it down below so you guys can get up to date with that in case you're thinking about getting a kitty with a Husky and it'll help you out a whole bunch. Huskies are mega, mega adaptable animals. They can basically adapt to any climate or become friendly with any sort of animal. <laughs> he's like, yeah, I'm smiling. The fourth question, and this is like, the impossible question that I can barely ever answer because I just don't know the answer to it, but I get asked it all the time. I'm gonna try and answer it the best I can for you right here, but we have tons of videos on the topic. And that is, what is the best food for a Siberian Husky? We know there's tons of dog foods out there, but we also know that Siberian Huskies are not created equal with other breeds. They kind of just roll to their own drum beat, take their own path in life, so it's kind of hard to figure out all their little itty bitty works from what they like to do whenever you're not in the house all the way down to what kinds of foods they like to eat. So people always come to me and say, yo dude, I love your huskies. What's the best food for my husky? What do you feed your husky? The best thing to know is you need to do your research overall when you're feeding your dog. You need to know exactly what your dog needs when it comes to nutrition and whatever you end up deciding to feed them, you need to make sure that they're getting that nutrition adequately. So let's say you decide to feed them a raw diet, which for the most part is the best way to feed a Siberian Husky, but it is very dangerous and it's very, very hard to get the portions right when it comes to raw feeding. You have to be super responsible. You have to be super clean. You have to know how to do everything, do it perfectly and not be sloppy about it. And that means you gotta have the money to do it because if you don't have the money, you can't pull out and be like, well, I don't have the money this week. I might as well buy that cheap kibble because mixing kibble and raw food diets is not a good way to go. So just remember that if you want to get into that type of diet. The type of diet that we recommend for our viewers is a rotational diet. Try different types of dog foods. Try different types of kibble. See which one your husky likes the most and which one reacts to them the best. Some dogs are going to throw kibbles up. Some dogs are going to be like, yo, this doesn't sit well with my tummy. You'll know because they're going to either scarf it down or they're going to be like, dude, I don't want to eat this at all when you put it in front of their face. Now, a word of caution. Don't be mixing two kibbles together. Don't be like, oh, yo, you know what? I'm going to put these two kibbles together in a bowl. You don't want to do that, and you don't want to flash change. You don't want to suddenly change your dog's food either. If you want to change your dog's food, make sure you do it over a course, a period of a couple of weeks, and then see if that food is better than the last. I know it takes time, and mostly dogs are all about time and patience, but this is the best way to think figure out what food is best for your Siberian Husky. Oh, and the answer to that was hamburgers. Hamburgers for sure. And, and I'm pretty sure both Britney Spears and Gila vote, yeah, hamburgers. Best thing to feed your Husky. And the number one question that I get asked all the time, the thing you're probably going to ask yourself whenever you get a Husky, or if you've had one, you know you've probably thought about it. Are Siberian Huskies difficult dogs to own? This is always the question. Moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas alike, they all want to rush to 60 formula and know, hey dude, are Huskies a hard dog to have? I think the answer is abundantly clear. The answer is no. Siberian Huskies are not difficult dogs to have. If they were, tons of people wouldn't be having them, right? People would be like, ah, I can't do this. This is impossible. Now that doesn't mean that there's not a learning curve. There definitely is. Siberian Huskies take a lot of understanding and patience and you need to train them to do certain things. But that doesn't mean that they're an overall difficult dog. There will be days if you have a Husky puppy that you're like, oh good lord, why did I even sign up for this? But when Siberian Huskies Huskies get older, for the most part, they get rid of all the crazy things that makes it hard about owning a puppy. Eventually, you just get a boring old husky that lays and sleeps on your floor all day like this. So don't be plagued with the idea that Siberian Huskies are a super difficult dog. Look how chill mine are right now. This is how they are most of the time when we're just relaxing on an evening. Get that, get that lizard. <laughs> get it! <laughs> 
<laughs> good girl, you gotta get it. You gotta get that lizard. That's gonna be about it from us today. If you guys have any questions about Siberian Huskies or you think that we missed one, go ahead and leave it down in the comments below. We'd love to hear about it. If you guys had fun today, don't forget to smash that like button and hit subscribe so you don't miss any Siberian Huskaroni pizza episodes. And we'll see you next time with another episode of Guess What? <laughs> That's right, whatever we make. Peace. Watch out! <laughs>